Hello gophers and welcome back to part 2 of our tutorial about gin package. In this video we will be learning about how to group different APIs into one. Let's go ahead and let's start learning. Just before we move forward please do not forget to like share and subscribe to our YouTube channel and also do not forget to press the bell icon so that you don't miss on any new notifications. Before we move forward I would be expecting that you have seen the first part of our tutorial which was about configuring the basic APIs like get, post or put in Go. If you have, haven't seen that video, click on the i icon on top right corner of this video and you can go ahead and watch that video first. Hi guys, so in the last video we learned about how to create basic APIs using Gen Framework in Golang. Now in this video, we will be learning about how to group different type of APIs into one group so that you can apply same kind of middleways on those uh, group of APIs or you can create versioning of your API. Let's say sometimes you have a requirement where you want to create version 1 of few APIs and then version 2 of those, those few set of APIs and leave the rest untouched. So how to create different groups where you can handle things differently. So we'll learn about this and let's start. So over here, I have just created one basic model for Jin, which is a by using the default function of Jin. And over here, I have created one group. Now to create a group, you will have to use the model dot group, name the group, and this should be a unique name. Now inside the braces of the group, you need to start using the variable that you created for the group name and start configuring your API. Now you can again configure one more group in case you want. You can again go ahead and create group again and then you can cascade group inside a group also. But that's not something that we'll be discussing right now straight away. But yeah, we'll, we'll do that in later part of the same video. So over here we have created one group which says it's belonging to a user so the api that will be created would be your base url slash user and then whatever is written in the path that you mentioned in the get uh, or the post request that you create now now so for this i have created one group with name user and over here for the blank path we'll be sending all the users that are there so i'll be sending a slice of users so I've used a test model which we used in the last video to keep it simple. Now we have also created one more API which is receiving an ID specifically. Now I'm not using that ID for my, my use right now but you might be having uh, cases where you will be using this ID, getting data from the database for this particular ID and then sending that model. So that's completely depending on your use case and how do you want to use this ID. So over here I have sent this hard coded data for this and this is not a slice, this is a simple model. So now let's run this API and see if we are able to see things on Postman. Okay. Now we can see that we have two APIs that we have con we have configured. One says user and it's a blank yeah. API. And next one is by ID where we are expecting an ID parameters into the API URL. Now let's hit the postman and see if we are able to. So I have already created one request. Let's clear this. So this is the first API, the blank API. So it would be nothing in the second part. So that is the first API that is there configured. So let's hit this and see if we are receiving the slice. So you can see we have received the slice user one, user two, which we configured over here. Now if I pass in ID one, so I'll receive only one. Now this is hard coded. Even if you pass two, there will be no change. So right now, forgive me for that part, but yes, I have printed what ID we have received so we can check over here on the console. Now let's create one more group where we will be grouping the user API or the user group into version 1 and version 2. So let's create v1 
and r dot group where i say this is version one okay and this all is going into one group that is version one group now forgive me if you see that i am doing some replication of code or duplication of code right now this is just an example and i just wanted to use this example and extend it so this is yeah so we created one group uh, that is v1 i got the variable v1 and from the v1 i have also now cascaded one more group that is user now i if i want one more user let's say uh, let's say one more group that is uh, maybe product and v1 dot group as product now this is again one more group that we have created now for sorry product dot get product dot get uh, by let's say id i want this by id and let's receive a function in dot context so this is the context function that we are receiving now i'll be sending c dot json as http dot status okay and i'll be sending a model which contains something different than what we send in user so let's say i'll change the just the key name of the product and over here again i send the same model and would only change the values in the model so this is the product one product two so this is one more group that i have created inside version one now with version one i have one group which is uh, product and then we have user now let's create version 2 of the api and create product and user separately again so what i'll do is i'll copy this create a version 2 for you guys so this is version 2 wherever i use version 1 this was version 1 this was version 2 now what we'll do is instead of passing as product this should be product v2 as the key and again here also let's change this just for our example v2 and let's change uh, v2 in the data as well so that it is very easy to understand from the data that we received that if we have received different set of data okay so i've created this now let's run the api again and let's see how many apis do we have configured okay now yeah api is running now you can see that i have these many apis configured where first one is v1 all these three apis are grouped into v1 group now the first endpoint is v1 slash product and we are expecting an id then again v1 user v1 user slash id again same endpoints on version 2 now let's try and hit the apis so i have given v1 slash user slash one slash user slash two so over here this was the first version of my api which received data as data and over here you can see data as data for v2 you can see the key name has changed because we just changed the key name and the names so this is how you receive it so you can even try with the user blank api again you see v2 the data that we have configured and with v1 we would receive the old data that we configured earlier
so we have seen this now let's also try to run the product api product slash because product is expecting an id definitely because we have configured so so let's run this and see what we get so this is product id one now if you see because we have sent a list of a slice let's say a slice of product with id even so that's how it's responding now we can also test for v2 we should get product version 2 so this is how you can keep creating groups of your apis and you can create multiple groups inside a group and you can configure your apis as you wish now in the next video what we'll be learning is about configuring your own middlewares and assigning them or uh, inserting them inside the pipeline just to check that if everything is okay so uh, there can be scenarios where you want to have an authentication applied so there can be different authentication that you want to apply on different groups or there can be one common authentication mechanism for your all apis and you want to keep it simple for every api or every version so how we can start configuring your apis with middlewares we'll start learning that and also learn how we can set some particular data that can float inside apis from the middleware so let's say in middleware if you are trying to access the token get the user id now you want that user id to be passed to your api or to be accessed in your api without accessing the token again you can definitely do it so we'll start learning about middleware in the next tutorial thank you for watching the video please do not forget to like share and subscribe to our youtube channel also press the bell icon so that you don't miss on any new notifications also do comment us below on any feedbacks or any new tutorials that you want us to do